Hello and welcome back. If this is your first time here, then hello and very warm welcome to you because I've never met you before. There's a lot more of you than what there used to be. Uh, today I really wanted to talk about one of my very favorite films. I love this film. <laughs> it's When Marnie Was There or in Japanese Omoide no Mani. And this was a Studio Ghibli film from the year 2014. It's based on the novel by Joan G. Robinson from the year 1967. It was a British novel, but a Japanese adaptation. It's rated PG and is one hour and 43 minutes long. Thematically, there's nothing in there that I would worry about showing younger children. There's a little bit of tobacco and a little bit of alcohol. There's no language. There's no sex, no violence. So if you're worried about that, don't be. Uh, it's available in Japanese with English subtitles or in English dub. So depending on your preference, there's both. So what this film is about, uh, if you haven't seen it, I really recommend that you do. It is excellent. Uh, I'm going to link a trailer below because that's what really got me interested in this. I watched the trailer and I was really fascinated because it looked almost like a mystery. And I would say that that is partly true. It's about a young girl named Anna. This is Anna right here. And she's different. She feels different from other kids her age. She's about 12 years old and she feels very isolated. And you find out that she has asthma and she, because of her health issues, is going to be living with her aunt and uncle, the Oiwas, up in the countryside because the air is going to be better for her. And so when she gets there, she doesn't really make contact with a lot of other kids her age. Part of that is her choice. And one day as she's wandering around, she sees this beautiful house on the other side of a lake. And there's a little girl there. The little girl is Marnie. That's the little blonde. And Marnie is very mysterious because she can't move very far from the house, and you don't know why. Later it's revealed why that is, but when you're watching it for the first time, you think, is this little girl real? And even Anna doesn't know this for sure. She kind of wonders if she's made her up as an imaginary friend. She believes this because of her isolation and her loneliness, it's, it's very well possible. And so you kind of go along the, with that idea throughout the film, Marnie isn't real. And so yes, in that aspect, I would consider this a little bit of a mystery, but at its core, I would say it's a lot to do with family, what it means to be family, whether that is you and your blood relatives, whether or not you're actually related to them. You don't have to be related to somebody to be family. Uh, it has a lot to do with friendship. It has a lot to do with that loneliness and isolation I was speaking about earlier. It has a lot to do with social awkwardness and hating yourself as a young person, which that's uh, very sad, but it's something that, you know, it happens and I think that it's good to talk about. And that's one thing that I really enjoy about Studio Ghibli films is that they're not afraid to talk about bigger issues. Even in films that are considered to be children's films, they're very approachable. So if you're a child, you can look at these films and think, yeah, they're really beautiful and I enjoy watching them from an aesthetic point of view. But when you're an adult, you kind of see the underlying themes and you think, oh, wow, that's actually quite deep. So one thing I actually really wanted to touch on was the fact that a lot of people uh, after watching this movie kind of felt that it was actually an LGBTQ film. And me personally, I don't see it that way, but I kind of wanted to offer up my take on things because uh, this film is very personal to me. And I want to explain why uh, I identify quite quite personally with the character of Anna because uh, she had a lot of health issues and so did I growing up and because of that I think that 
made us feel kind of like we were on the outside looking in. And granted, that's not her only issue that makes her feel this way. Spoiler alert, she's lost her parents. Not just her parents, but her grandmother, who was her caretaker. And so she's living with a non-blood relative, which is very difficult for her. Especially as she finds out that she's being, uh, her caretaker is being paid to look after her. And so I can't identify with that aspect, but I identify with being kind of lonely and not having as many friends. And um, I think that has a lot to do with why she's so scared to make contact with other people. She wants friends, but she's scared of being looked at as different. She's scared of being abandoned because she is all alone, or at least she feels this way, because she doesn't have any blood relatives left in her life. She's scared that once she makes a friend, they'll leave her too. And I think that's important to note because a lot of people are assuming that uh, she feels different because she's gay. And I mean, that could certainly, that that's certainly possible that Anna is gay. And they never say one way or another. And I don't think they would, but I think a lot of people are like looking really deep into this film and a lot of what's there on the surface is actually giving you a lot of information and insight into her character. See, like from the very first shot of the film, she's literally sitting on the outskirts of the playground with her sketch pad while all the other children are interacting. And she's like so closed off with her sketchbook. The teacher comes over to her and is like, can I take a look at your, at your work? And she, she kind of looks up and she's so nervous. She's just so not used to talking to other people, whether it's people her age or people who are older than her. She's just so closed off. Like in a sense, being so, being uh, very social is something that is forced upon her. It's not natural to her. And so anytime she's in that situation, she just, you could tell it's a very foreign concept. Later on in the film, there's a scene where she's with children her age up in the countryside when she's there with the Oiwas. And there's a young girl named Nobuko. Nobuko is around her age, a little bit older. And she's pointing out how Anna's eyes are a different color. She has blue eyes. In Japan, it's quite common to have darker colored eyes and just the small fact that somebody is pointing out something in her that's different sets Anna off she does not want anybody saying hey that's something that's different about you she just freaks out and runs away so when she first meets Marnie for the first time I noticed that there's a lot of like blushing and stuff involved which could be misconstrued for uh, a romantic relationship and again spoiler alert that's really creepy <laughs> if you if you take it to be that way because they are related you find out later on that Marnie is actually the, her grandmother uh, it's hard to explain the whole thing as to, you know like why would that be her grandma but but it is her grandmother so any romantic feelings there would be like whoa totally wrong um, but I don't know if you've ever felt this way. When you're around somebody who you like, romantic or not, and you're that young, and uh, you haven't had many friends, you, you're going to feel not necessarily awkward, but it's a new situation for you. So I don't think that blushing is that weird. And later on, when Anna becomes quite jealous of the fact that Marnie has a boyfriend named Kazuhiko and her attention has deviated from Anna, it, all of it is on this boy, the fact that Anna gets quite jealous I don't think is abnormal at all. I myself have been jealous of friends when I was quite young just for the fact that I wanted them to be with me and not with other friends or boyfriends. 
I think that that is completely normal. And another thing to take into account is the fact that there are cultural differences. It's not uncommon for young girls to be quite a bit closer in Japan and portrayed as such than it is to be portrayed as close in North America and other countries. You'll often find in Japanese media that young girls are, you know, holding hands or hugging or blushing or saying, oh my gosh, you're so cute. So now that we've discussed the fact that Marnie is Anna's grandmother, uh, towards the very end of the film, Marnie, I don't want to say abandons Anna, but there is a scene where Anna wakes up and finds that Marnie isn't there anymore. And there is a scene where she goes to confront Marnie and is incredibly angry. And I think that this is a way for her to confront her grandmother who passed away when she was very little. A way to confront her about how upset she felt when her grandmother passed away. Just how sad and how horrible it was to know that that was her last relative leaving her and it's it's an incredibly heart-wrenching scene to witness and i don't think a lot of people realize that that's what that symbolizes it's it's not and uh, getting upset with another girl because she's jealous and she thinks about her romantically it literally a granddaughter speaking to her grandmother and saying, I'm angry at you for dying on me. <sighs> it's so powerful. And it gets me every time. I've cried three times at this movie. <laughs> every time I'm like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm crying. <laughs> so I hope I've explained myself well enough there. Like I said, I think I think people read a little bit further into this than what it needs to be because everything you need to know about Anna is right there. She is hurt at being abandoned by her relatives. She's isolated because of what's happened in her family and because of her health. But at the end of the film, she is starting to reconcile her past and she is starting to make friends with a young girl named Sayaka and Nobuko even. So you can see that she's trying and I think that she'll be okay. So I, I would highly recommend not just watching this for yourself if you're older but even just showing your kids if you have any. They may not get all of the subtext right away if they're if they're quite young, if they're a little bit older, they might start to understand it. But even so, it's such a beautiful film that I don't think that they'll find it boring in any way. I think they'll really enjoy it. And I hope you do too, if you do decide to watch it. Thanks so much for listening to this, and I hope to see you in the next one.